So I've, huh? Nice. Hello everyone. I'm not gonna be reading comments just so the replay is a little bit smoother. Just know that I say hello, especially to Zoe. And um, I've already made my crossbody strap. I used a thinner vinyl, so it all goes through the slide adjuster over nicely. This is one and a half inches wide. And I'm working on the D-rings for the side of the bag now. So you just fold in your long raw edges. And I'm gonna grab another piece of tape. put it towards the bottom like that and I'm gonna grab my one and a half inch d-ring undo the tape and I like to go lower than halfway just so that when you are sewing it together you've got a lot up at the top because if this pulls out you know it would be bad I want to say this is probably the first bag I've ever made with one and a half inch wide hardware, except I guess the swoon duffel bag. Um, I'm also going to be adding double sided tape across the top of the accent panel, which is just a little um, like three and a half inch piece. Uh, the first one I made had a raw edge and I really wasn't a fan of the way it looked, so I'm going to change it. So I'm just using quarter inch wide tape. I'm gonna fold that over. Just that little tiny bit helps. Um, so my exterior flap is fused with woven fuse and fleece across the entire thing. Uh, we're going to add a zipper pocket to it, and then I'll add the overlay. Um, the pattern says to add the overlay first, but if you are making your zipper pocket and you iron your front and you hit that vinyl with the overlay, you'll be very sad. So I decided to change that up. <laughs> so I'm also doing the front pockets a little bit differently just because I'd like to do it the way I'm used to. I'm stubborn in my ways. <laughs> so I'm cutting the front zipper pocket panel in half, finding that center, adding the box for the zipper pocket. Just a seven inch box. And then there are pattern measurements for where your zipper pocket should be. So I'm just going to make sure that this lines up accordingly. I, I gotta go up a little bit higher. Okay. Awesome. So I've got it all set up here. It's a vertical pocket. So I'm gonna start on the side.
I was using quarter inch wide um, double sided basting tape. Okay, so then you want to cut through all this. It's a little thick and then you're going to trim down that fleece. Otherwise it's a little bit thick. It probably says to do that in the pattern, like trim it from your fleece before you start. I just skimmed, I'm terrible. <laughs> and then cut as close to the thread as possible without cutting through it. Yeah, I don't know, Ben is not around. I mean, he's around somewhere. And then Connor is upstairs sleeping on the couch. Ben's usually just here for the late night sewing phone. Okay, so to get that fleece out, I'm just kind of separating it and trimming it down. I love it. <laughs> Last time, did, you were here when I was like, well, I didn't hear you. Yeah, okay. Are you filming because I'm not wearing pants? Uh, you won't be in it. Oh, great. <laughs> you just came home and you're like, nope. Okay, so I just had a very stressful, like, mm -hmm. are you live? Yeah. Oh, hi. A <laughs> uh, very stressful, like, hour. Mm. It took me 20 minutes to find this place. I'm driving around this plaza. My GPS is like, destination on the left. No, I get, no. It's no, not though. It's not though. <laughs> and like, my hair was tickling the nape of my neck just right. Ooh, that was spider? No, no. I just totally get now why Brittany lost her shit and shaved it all off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you were talking about my Brittany for a second. No, I was like, what Brittany. at what? Um, and like my, my bra, sorry everybody, I'm gonna talk about my bra for a second. They're fine. My bra was like laying on my rib cage, and not in like a painful way, but yeah. in just a way that it just, it was the perfect storm, man. Mm, mm, mm. The perfect storm. Where you're like, all of these have to come off. All of these things have to just stop happening yeah. right now. So I'm gonna put some pants on. You don't have to, none of us care. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. <laughs> it was stressful. I'm sorry that happened. Thank you. You shouldn't have had to go through that. Ugh, but we love you. Okay. You feel better? Yeah. Yeah, quite a bit. I think I'm on the verge of like a panic attack. Like a Britney's having a breakdown? Or... <laughs> no, just like, oh god. It's not my turn. What have I gotten done today? Like, uh, nothing. You have. You've gotten a lot done. You did too? You're looking at me like you're insane. You Yeah, the cameo, and then the cameo was like, no, I'm not doing this, I won't, you can't make me. And I was like, okay, but I'm going to make you. And Nikki was like, use double-sided, or use painter's tape to hold it in place. And I was like, okay, I'll try that. But she's, and then she did finish a bag. Yay! Yeah, and I hate it. Aww. So let's make another. Yay! That's it, a roller coaster. Yeah. But... You would be correct. It's so cute. I love it. So I just went ahead and cut the fleece out of that zipper pocket area so that it's not as bulky. And then when I flip it through and top stitch, it's not going to be as puffy where we're adding the zipper. Because the last time I did it, I was like, I'm not going to cut it out. And I was like, I don't like the way it looks. So this time we cut it and then we're flipping it through. Um, 
so then I'm gonna use steam to press that out. So then that's what that looks like. And then I think you want the zipper pull at the top of the bag. And then we're just gonna sew it in place. Um, what's really awesome about this sewing pattern is that uh, it's designed by a friend of mine named Georgia and she is donating 50% of the pattern sales to St. Jude's. Um, so I've got some hardware kits available in rainbow and nickel. And when you buy the hardware kits, I am also donating 50%. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> I feel better about the Dr. Pepper. We were trying to debate what to get for lunch. And at first they said Taco Bell, and then I remember they don't have Dr. Pepper. So we went to Balance to get chicken salad sandwiches, which was good. Oh, that sounds tasty. Yeah, and then I was like, <laughs> but all I want is a Dr. Pepper. I went to Subway, and I'm just like standing there, and the lady's like, okay, but what do you want? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. This is the question I've been asking myself for two months. And then I just let her, she's like, do you want me to put peppers and onions on it before I grill it? Yeah, that'd be good things. That would be great. And she's like, we're bad at toppings. And I just stood there. Oh. And she's like, tomato and garlic aioli? Yes. Yeah, that sounds great. It sounds very good. And I told her I wanted a chocolate chip, and God bless this woman's heart. She dug through all the cookies until she found the one with the most chocolate chips. Oh. I was like, thank you. That's nice. Oh God, I'm having deja vu. Again? Again. Oh. I hate deja vu. Like, do I sew too much or is it, it's a real thing. That's a thing, man. I, I hate it too. I mean, I have really bad deja vu all the time, but this is, okay, anyway. <laughs> so then you're gonna sew all the way around this zipper pocket, close it up. leather cubby hole okay. no no over over yes I mean would it have mattered no <laughs> okay so we've got all that done so now I can add on the overlay uh, the overlay piece does have rounded corners, but I was like, why would I cut the rounded corners out and try to match it up when I could just lay it over top and then sew it on and then flip it over and trim it to the same size. Work smarter, not harder. Also, I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm so lazy. Okay, so I'm gonna top stitch, stitch length 4.5. It would not be lazy. Okay, so you could baste it along the bottom side if you wanted to, but I'm going to grab the flap second flat piece 
which I've already added a snap to. Uh, one thing that I would change the next time I make this bag is I would add two magnetic snaps. I feel like this flap is really large and it would sit better with two snaps and I would add them like two inches from the outside edge and then vice versa, or not vice versa, but same for the front piece. Just, just same. Okay, so I'm gonna line up the top right sides together, the lining piece and the exterior piece. Flip this all together. Maybe I can move you out. <laughs> Tammy, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, you're Tammy too. It's another Tammy. She says she's a Dr. Pepper lover. And her mantra is also work smarter, not harder. Okay. Oh, wow, Donna. Okay, so. You can see how I have my excess vinyl sticking out the sides here, but that's okay because we're gonna trim down the excess anyway. So, um, 4.5, no, I'll use the stitch length of four. I think it's about a half inch seam allowance. Just so around the curves. trim down my seam allowance and that's when I'll trim off that excess vinyl. I do love the idea of adding the vinyl to the bottom of it though to kind of add weight so that it falls closed if that makes sense. Like it looks cool also. Yeah, baby. Wow, just throw it all around, Tammy. That's fine. This, oh. Oh. We have five of those bowler bags cut out. They're so cute. They're so cute. Yeah, the flirkin one is going to be so cool. Hot pink piping, hot pink lining, oh. and that blue vinyl. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And rose gold hardware. Yep, 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 yep. This one first. This one first. Okay. Okay, but they have hot red pink plaid tops. Oh, cute, like buffalo plaid? No. So I'm flipping it through, pushing out the corners. Oh, that's cute. I know. You are a Tom's lover. Yeah. You're done? So now I'm just rolling the seam to make sure it's pressed all the way. And then you can use your iron to steam in the drawer. Either one is fine. And then make sure your pocket is laying flat. I'm going to steam it really quick. Um, Tammy, I have one more request. Can you fill up my iron cup? Okay. Just from the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. You had this look on your face like upstairs just in the kitchen? No, I just wanted to know if it needs to be distilled water. Oh. I think it says don't use distilled water. Okay, interesting. I know. I could be very wrong. I'm sure everyone watching will let me know. So then I'm clipping around the outside edge. Just 
so everything stays where I want it. Hi, Evelyn. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Now I'm all set. <laughs> I don't got this. July. <laughs> July, like the 4th of you July. You need to calm down. I need to calm down. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <sighs> I only have five bags that I have to do. Six. Seven. Are you done? That's the last. Well, I have a custom order that I have to do before we go, I think, because her bag should be here. Monday, yes. Early. No, 9.30. Well, I won't be here. Right. My ortho... Well, I'll be back. I should be back. It took five minutes last time. Okay. I'll be here. Okay. Yes. Thank you for your hard work. No problem. You got this. Popping my birds. Now, if I send you home first, no, I'm kidding. Aww. I'm joking. <laughs> Just for Josie. Just for Josie. Yay! All right, ladies. Me. Stitch length five. I will. I promise. base across the top just to keep everything together. And then I'm going to fold it in half and snip the center. Okay. So there's our flap finished and it's got this fun pocket here. Hi Chelsea. Thanks. I thought it was really funny. I didn't want any like curse words on it, but I like that it says triflers need not apply. And you're in a cult. Call your dad. Stay out of the forest. Yeah. It's good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the gusset pieces because again I like to get rid of as many loose pattern pieces as I can at once. Um, the way I cut mine out is I use the lining panel, the lining bottom panel to cut out my exterior bottom panel, um, but she does have it so that if you're using like a directional print for your exterior that it'll be pieced together so nothing's upside down. So I really, I like that she thought of that. Okay, so these are the upper panels and I'm just gonna lay those together. Sew it at a half inch seam allowance. And then instead of lifting everything up and cutting it, I'm just going to Grab the other side, clip it, and bring it towards my machine, and so it's like a U shape. It's a little production trick. I'm going to repeat that. So here's my lining bottom, and then here's the top lining pieces. that on the other side. Sorry if I'm speeding through this. 
Um, I've had a lot of caffeine today and not a lot of sleep. And then I can clip all my little jump threads. And then on the lining panel, I'm just going to fold that seam up and top stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that same technique of just jumping from the next side. And then on the exterior, I'm going to do more of a butterfly stitch, which is where you open the side seam and top stitch on either side of it. So again, I'm opening this side seam, sewing across the top, and then turning it around to sew across the bottom. And then I'll trim all my excess. So there's my gusset piece finished and it's interfaced with fusible fleece and I can't um, iron my vinyl long enough to get the fleece to fully fuse but it's it's okay uh, the pattern says you can also add foam to the gusset but with waterproof canvas etc I didn't feel like it was necessary so now I'm gonna fold the gusset pieces in half Snip the bottom centers and set them aside, the lining anyway. I'm going to add my D-ring connectors while I'm here. And then if you have extra interfacing, you could trim it down now. Trim it down now. No. So I've got a little piece of tape there. And then one and a half inches from the top, centered on the panel. So I'm measuring one and a half, kind of holding it in place, and then laying my ruler the other way to line it up the center. And then pressing, and then repeating on the other side. So one and a half from the top, So if you think this is too thick for your machine, you could add probably four total rivets. Um, but I'm going to make a box stitch and then put two diagonal lines for an X through it. Um, stitch length set to four or 4.5. Back stitch, cover up your hardware, protect it. Threads up to try and 
trim down my threads. So there's the box stitch. And then if you wanted to, you could also add like another line here to reinforce it even more. Is it nap time? Might be. I don't blame you. It's stubble jam snow time. <laughs> okay, so there is our side gusset panel. Gusset? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'll try to fuse that. it is finished. So I'm going to grab my exterior main panels. Get those out of the way. It's actually a pretty quick bag to make. I'm going to really quick, I can see where I folded them in the center. So I'm just going to really quick make those little snips so I can line everything up. Um, Another thing I would kind of adjust this pattern for in the future is uh, you could make it probably four or five inches wider to hold a larger laptop. Um, I think my one complaint is it's a little thin, but nowadays people do have smaller laptop, laptops, MacBooks, etc. Probably at my shirt. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I would omit one layer of the fleece and add a slip pocket underneath honestly on either side so that way you have even more storage more pockets um, you just would want thinner fabric especially with all the fleece so one side gets a magnetic snap that's my flap don't use that Where'd she go? Ooh, where'd you go? There it is. You could even use this line here, like fold it over and make your slip pocket and then put the snap on the slip pocket. But again, I would add two snaps, one on this side, one on the other. And then it'll close much more securely. the washer okay so we're ready to add our gusset I'm gonna start by lining up the bottom center snips clipping out three
and then I'm going to line up the top. And then work my corners. I'm going to work my corner. <laughs> work those corner curves together. I don't think that's any better. <laughs> so there is that. And then I'm going to sew using a seam allowance, about half an inch, and then a stitch length of four. Back stitch at the top. And then I like to do just a quick back stitch over the butterfly stitch seams. Because when I trim down my seam allowance, it's going to kind of, the stitches could come loose. trim down all that fleece with the worst scissors in the world. CJ may be working late tonight, he said. Um, yeah, he said he'll let us know. <laughs> Were you there when he kept yelling at me about the uh, hotel for our Adepticon? Yeah, did you get it? I did. Yay. Um, <laughs> it was like 12.03. No, it was 11.50 and he played the final countdown through the Echo. <laughs> yeah, and then I texted him and I was like, okay, but can you play Lover instead? I mean... Yeah, so he finally did it. And then he's like, did you get it? It was like 12.03 at that point. He said, did you get it? And I was like, oh, was that now? <laughs> and he was like, do not mess with me. <laughs> I was like, yes, I got it. He goes, did you get, did you get two? I was like, two rooms or two beds? And he's like, two beds. I was like, yes, I got you two beds. <laughs> I was like, oh, good. <laughs> you weirdo. <laughs> Do not mess with me. That was great. Like you. The other night when he made me cry at dinner. Do not mess with me. He's lucky I was here. You honestly would have been like, Lauren. Calm down. Yeah, basically. Why are you crying about this? No, no, I I get over your rage. Okay, great. <laughs> so I tell you about the time that I burnt dinner and lost my shit. I think yeah, you mentioned yeah. it. I know exactly. What you mean. I mean, it's the same as me finding. Pico on my quesadilla. <laughs> or uh, my burrito, yeah. I was like, it has Pico. I thought you do. I hate Pico. I don't even want this anymore. And I just like sobbed into my burrito. Yeah, I, it was, it was probably, the burn dinner incident was probably like five years ago. Oh, wow. So when we still like each other. Yeah. And I, cried so hard and I was convinced that I was a terrible cook and that he was going to leave me because I was a terrible cook. Yeah. That's not why he left me apparently, but unrelated and I sobbed for probably 20 minutes. <laughs> it's fine, we're just crazy. Yeah, pretty much. Uter rage. Uter rage. I liked over -e rage. Over -e rage? Yeah. All right, so I'm just repeating those steps with the other main panel for the exterior and the gusset. Again, you could add a slip pocket to the back and the front, all the pockets. 
Stitch length of four, seam allowance, half an inch. trim down the excess and then we're going to baste on the flap yeah and it's so soft if you held it the other way you'd have the little beans on your face <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I bought that. I got that in uh, Iowa, I think, and Ashley helped me try and talk them down. Nice. And I don't think she would go lower than 40 on it. And I was like, worth it. Don't care. Yeah, 100% worth it. <laughs> it's too cute. All right, so I'm just going to turn it through, make sure all those seams are caught nicely. So the side that the magnetic snap is not on is where the flap is going to go face down. So lining side up and you're going to clip at the center. You like the other side? Yeah, I like the side with the beans. Oh, that makes sense. Hi, Judy. So there's the flap based it on. And then I'm going to flip this so that it's wrong side out and the flap is much longer. So you're going to have to like lay it in so pushing it. back to wrong side out. It's like a tongue that's too big. So you can see I've got it curved to fit in there nicely. So we can go ahead and set our exterior aside and work on the lining. Pieces. Um, what I really love is her cutting guide. I've seen some that kind of make my eyes go all wonky and confused. Um, but what I used was um, just regular packing tape and an expo marker so I can cross off as I'm cutting and interfacing and then I can wipe it off. And next time I go to cut and interface, I can do those same little marks again. So I've got this little piece of foam. I'm working on making a bag pattern for my mom with card slots in a zipper pocket. Do you think you could do a Tory roll of one in a bag pocket? Uh, maybe, yeah. So, yeah, definitely a great system. So this is the um, electronic slip pocket. So uh, since I'm using waterproof canvas, I can't 
um, adhere this foam as easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this on itself. I'm actually gonna put the foam close to the top and I'm going to top stitch it all together just across that fold. Stitch length 4.5. And then Christy, who's watching, was one of the pattern testers, I believe. And then I'm going to line up the bottom and the sides and flip it over. And then I'm just gonna baste along the curve and then trim the excess. then you've got this padded slip pocket. Um, and if you're making it for something more specific, you could even add a divider line or you could add um, more, like one more slip pocket here for like pens or cords or something like that. It might be kind of fun. Customize it a bit further. Oh, did I? Oh, I'm gonna fold this in half snip my center for the gusset. I'll go ahead and do that with this one too. And then on this side, we're going to add a zippered pocket, but you could also add um, another slip pocket, maybe without the foam this time. Something like that could be fun. Um, and then in her tutorial, she does her zipper pockets a different way. Everyone has their own way of doing things. I'm just gonna do it my way. Seven inches. half an inch. And line up our center lines. And then you're gonna leave this pocket undone in the bottom because that's what we're gonna birth through. I really need to get new scissors over here. Okay. The 
lay my zipper in place. So around. Before I close up the zipper pocket, I'm going to push my zipper pull through. the bottom of this pocket open. I know I already said that, but just reminding myself. You can trim down the excess of your zipper pocket if you would like to. I'm just going to go ahead and flip this up under and press. And then we're ready to add our gusset pieces. I'm going to unzip that pocket from my gusset. Line up the centers. pattern she fully explains kind of how to um, grade your seam allowance so that it's wider as you go down so that the lining fits nicely. I just kind of naturally do that anyway. Nowadays I should say. If you're having trouble fitting your curves, you could add some little snips to help them sit better. Seam allowance set to four. Half inch seam allowance at the top and then kind of adjust to the five eighths. This is the second one I've made today, and the first one took way longer. <laughs> but I was doing like 40 million things. I even said to my helper, I was like, have I really been working on this all flipping day? And she's like, no, you've been doing other stuff. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> Hello to Scotland.
Okay. So clipping it from the top so I can just sew around on a flat surface. Nice and easy. Stitch like the four. Start off at a half inch, kind of move up to the five eighths. sit a little better you don't need to snip it much just like an eighth of an inch quarter of an inch and then it'll sit nicer and kind of flare out Seam allowance. Uh, and I will post a link to the pattern when I'm done. Yay, Joe, that's awesome. And it's great because you support a good cause. Um, and like I said, I do have some kits available. They are limited because I'm running low on half inch. Uh, but once I sell out 50% of the purchase price, your purchase price is going to be donated as well. I'm excited. All right, so I'm going to turn my lining right side out. I think if I made another one, I would add like four inches to the width only because I have a feeling people are going to be like, oh man, I just wish it were wider. Um, but it is a great pattern, nice and simple, so that you can adapt it for your needs. So there's the lining. Oh, thanks. Aren't they fun? <laughs> mm, I need chapstick, man. Dr. Pepper break. Deborah, that's awesome. Yeah, these are great for like iPads, stuff like that. <clears throat> All right, I like to make sure that my zipper pack pocket is on the back. So that's how I'm gonna stick that in there. This one is definitely going more smoothly than my first one. Uh, I do ship to the UK. Shipping, I think, I, I know it's first class international. It can be pricey, um, so it's up to you. I'll move this up so you guys can see, since we're not working on the table as much anymore. I've already made my crossbody strap. Um, you trim down the seam allowance so it's not as bulky in your bag. So right now I'm lining up the side seams so everything fits nicely. And then I work it front to back. Oh. Um, Jamie, I do not know off the top of my head, but I bet Christy could help. You could definitely adjust the measurements to do so though, and just add a little bit um, to the centers. So this is the accent. They'd say you add, if you add two inches, that's technically adding four inches to the width. Um, just make sure you kind of do that to all your pieces. It's a little bit of math, but it's worth it. Okay, so I've got it all stitched together. So I'm just going to sew around the top. And 
then you want to make sure you're sewing past your basting stitch for the flap. My stitch length is 74. And I'm just kind of going slowly, working from clip to clip. So that things don't shift on me. I don't think I sewed past. Wait, maybe I did. I think I'm going to sew around that again. I'm just sewing around the top twice to make sure it's nice and even. Uh, and then if you wanted to, you can trim down your top seam allowance. I like to leave it only because it adds a little bit of stability to the top. I'm going to change out my bobbin. I don't think it's empty, but I don't want to risk it, especially when I have plenty made. Darn it. <laughs> All right. Now comes the task of trying to berth it through the zippered pocket, especially with the waterproof canvas and the fleece and stuff. So what I'm going to do, oh, thanks, Karen. I had my little sister braid it. I get it done on Monday and I'm so excited. I'm ready for a better dye job than I had last. Um, so I'm just going to steam my waterproof canvas really quick. Some people say they use a hair dryer to kind of soften it, but to give my hands a little break. Steam it. I'm gonna start by grabbing the bottom of the exterior, pulling that through first, I think. Or is it my flap? It's kind of a combination. I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit so I can show you guys and it's not off camera. Hi Susie. Trying to snag some free Wi-Fi at 10. Aw. That sounds fun. Test your stitching. lining. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this was a seven inch zipper pocket. An elephant through your cat door, it's true. Yeah, Joe, exactly. Ugh, trying to push the last of the lining through. So I just want to make sure that seam is nice and pressed apart. I'm going to stick my hand back in through the zipper pocket and make a fist and roll it along the gusset and make sure all those are out. Finger strength is key, I know. So true. Ten inches. There you go. Perfect. I'm kind of pushing the lining back through. Okay. Oh, forget it then. <laughs> uh, you can also leave a part in the lining open and then just stitch it shut when you're done. It's not necessary that you have to turn it through that zipper pocket. Um, I don't think you could leave a bigger one open. <laughs> um, and mine is actually harder to turn through because I did use vinyl and fleece and the waterproof canvas. It's hard work. <sighs> okay, so I like to clip it just to make sure everything sits nicely. I'm gonna fold the top edge over. <laughs> down a little more. There we go. I love this tripod. <laughs> oh. okay. So that shut. it back in. I think this bag could be made with one inch hardware. Um, if you're putting a lot of heavy stuff in it, I think one and a half inch is best, but I feel like it's so small. That or I'm just not used to one and a half inch hardware, but I'm like, really? Could be done with one inch. Okay, push those corners in. So now we're ready to top stitch it. Just again, kind of rubbing, rolling that seam back and forth in between my fingers to make sure it's all the way through. There's no unevenness anywhere. You like the, yeah, and you know, that's all personal preference. I love that about bag making is you can Okay, so then when it folds over, it closes nicely in the center. But again, I think that two snaps would have been great just on either side, just so it's really secure, especially for how big the flap is. And then a slip pocket here, you could add an even one on the back would be really nice. But I love that she wrote it simply that's kind of how I like to do patterns too, is write it simple and then let people make their own changes, you know? 
Judy, I wasn't sure where would be a good place to add it. I guess right here would have been nice, but there's a woven label in there and I can add a keychain. It's fine. All right, so I'm going to top stitch from the lining. It was easier for me last time, so I'm just laying it flat. And since I know that seam is rolled out nicely and I can pull on the flap to help me there as well. So I'm going to switch my stitch length to 4.5. What is nice about the one snap though is it makes the cost lower to make. It makes it a little bit easier for a beginner. But you know me, I gotta make changes. So again, I'm just pushing my lining in place, getting it snapped closed, and then it's all nice and finished. Hi, Elsie. Um, I did already make my strap, so I apologize. Put that in place. Um, so yeah, I really, I do really like the pattern. I'm so glad I purchased it um, and cut two out to make. Uh, I don't, I really don't think I have any other suggestions as far as like interfacing goes. I really like the interfacing she used. I mean, she's a bag maker, so she knows what she's doing. Um, I think you could just add a few more slip pockets and that would be really cool. But what's nice is her cutting guide has room at the bottom so you could write those in yourself also. Um, kind of like extra notes. Uh, as far as pricing goes, in case you guys are curious about that, depending on the materials you use um, and how long it takes, of course, I would say you could charge anywhere from at the low end, like $45, all the way up to like $100 or $105. And if you use leather, even more, um, or made it a little bit wider, customized it a bit more. Um, I'm going to be pricing these at $85 just because of the time it took and the materials used. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's super cute. I love this pocket. I love a good horizontal pocket. I don't know why. But you could even add two. You could add that same pocket to the back. Um, I really love how it stands on its own. It's nice. So that is it for me right now. Trying to think I may be uploading some videos I may not be uh, so if you don't see me that's why um, yeah hope you guys have a good weekend if I don't see you and enjoy how do I end it I can never remember